G'day guys, welcome back to Fix It and Post. My name is Nick. Today in this tutorial, we're just going to talk about how to set up realistic shadows in Element 3D to put into your scene. Now, we've got Frankie here. He's just wandering into my scene and then walking towards me. Um, but you can see right here that he's casting no shadows on the ground, which is, is a telltale for telling you this scene does not look real. Looks like he's floating or something. It just doesn't look correct, right? I mean, the fact that it is a Minecraft zombie is probably another tip that tells you that's not real, but it, it, shadows. Shadows are important. Now, you can turn on uh, ambient occlusion, but I don't think that's enough. Realistic shadows is what's going to sell this. Now, I saw a, a few tutorials out there sort of explaining how to do shadows, but I think they must lift out some very important things. So I'm just going to go through it again and a little more comprehensively on what you think you should do. So let's go into element. Uh, this is the element with, uh, this is the layer with element in it. So I'm going to go to my scene setup. You're going to see this was the original one with the, uh, this is the, this is a copy which I'm using as the mirror in the reflection in the mirror. Uh, and this is just a spherical environment in case you're wondering. Obviously I took a spherical environment and I'm going to show you how to do an actual full 3D uh, yeah, basically composite one day. But today I'm just going to do a quick one on how to do shadows because I feel like everybody needs to know how to do this properly. All right, so here is our main layer with the main object that we've got. We're going to actually insert a ground plane to it. So we're going to go to create and insert a ground plane. And that is it. If it's too small or too big, you can just come down to it uh, and shrink it down or shrink it up depending on what you need. But that's plenty. That We don't need more space than that. All right. And now we are going to apply a material to it. So we're going to go down to twirl this down and go to the default. And then we're going to go to this cog, which is the advanced tab. And we're going to change this to a matte shadow. And there it disappears. But don't freak out. It's still there. We've just turned off the material so that it's only just going to accept a shadow from whatever object is casting onto it, which is going to be Frankie. All right, we're going to press OK, and that'll do. Now, right now, you can see nothing is happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the render settings, and we're going to go to shadows, and we're going to turn it on. Now, this is off by default, but you need to turn it on. So we're just going to turn it on, and nothing happens, right? Nothing's happening. Why? Why is nothing happening? Well, this was the thing that was bothering me was that everybody said exactly the same thing I just said, except they forgot to tell you one very important thing. You've got to turn one more switch on and you'll never guess what that switch is. You go to your light, which you've already set up, and then you have to twirl down. And then you see this little button here that says cast shadows. If you don't turn that on, shadows will not be cast. Now, I know that's really obvious, but it wasn't obvious to me. And every tutorial that I saw didn't tell me this. And so I racked my brain for an hour looking for this button, trying to figure out what it was until finally I just stumbled upon this and thought, I wonder if turning this will do anything. So I did. And voila, we have realistic shadows, my friends. Look at this. Look at this. The shadows are there. They are casting onto the ground correctly in the correct position. Obviously, the shadows will cast depending on where you place your light. I've got a parallel light here in case you are wondering what kind of light I'm using. I find parallel lights do the best for uh, simulating kind of the sun a lot better. I think they cast nicer shadows. Now, to muck around with how the shadow actually looks, you're going to have to go into the shadow properties themselves and muck around with some of the ways the shadow is uh, casting onto your... Um, you know, onto your object, but you can just muck around there. And there's even a ray trace option as you like, but I didn't like the ray trace option as much. Actually, it looks about the same, doesn't it? But you could use either. But like I said, if you want to know how those shadows are getting cast, that's what you got to do. You got to turn on that one switch, that one switch that I didn't see, which was super annoying. Anyway, guys, I hope that's helped. Um, I will go into depth about how to composite this whole scene. I'm going to do a few more scenes so you have a few more things you can composite in. Let me know if this has been helpful. Um, I've got an Instagram account too you can follow it if you want to message me and you know just chit chat about general things. Hey, and uh, leave me a comment. I will read it and I will reply to it. All right, guys, thanks for listening and I'll chat to you next time. And guys, a whole bunch of you out there are not subscribed to the channel, but you are watching the videos. So do me a favor, just click the subscribe button. It'll just take a second. And if you don't like what you're watching, then just unsubscribe. It's pretty much that easy.